Player Showdown is the only tournament in existence where the viewers determine who fights and who wins. I'd always been obsessed with the idea of who would win in fights against each other, and uh, that led me to Swordplay Studios, where I was employed by Tim Weske, and he allowed me to teach one of the stage combat classes here at Swordplay Studios. I had finally gotten to the point where there was enough talent in my class to be able to put these people together in some epic sword fighting clashes that I knew would stand up and that would be really good. And after a couple years of teaching the classes, I built up uh, a roster of students who I felt really had the skill to try something more challenging than what we had been doing. So I devised a tournament between eight warriors that existed any time throughout history, fantasy or realistic, and we would face them off against each other and see who would win. What I did not expect is that it would have such an instantaneous following online. So we got the idea that this would be something that people would be entertained to watch in a feature format. Mortal Kombat actually was one of my earliest inspirations. When I was young, I played that game all the time. Street Fighter 2, well Street Fighter also. Well Street Fighter 2 and all of its subsequent variations, Super, Turbo, Ultra. In Street Fighter, everyone came from a different country and you got to see all these different martial arts style face off against each other. And in Mortal Kombat, they fought to the death. And, and not just death, but gruesome, over-the-top, bloody melee. And since here at Swordplay, we specialize in weapons, I thought that it would be a really awesome premise to have warriors from all over the world, from any time, compete with whatever weapon there or style was native to them and see what the outcome would be based on the popular vote of the people who were watching it. So there's really no science involved. For the first tournament I anticipated that it would be easy enough for me to fill an eight-man bracket, but when I made the announcement of what I was going to do, it generated a lot of interest and, and I had nearly double that. So I decided to open up the bracket to include 16 fighters. One of the decisions that I made at the very beginning of Warrior Showdown is that we would use only improper nouns. So you won't see any specific warriors fighting. A lot of people called with requests for like, I want to see Jackie Chan versus Bruce Lee or Chuck Norris versus Jet Li. But uh, these are actual people, so we, we decided that the tournament would be more representative of a type of warrior. <laughs> well, there's a reason why our slogan is bringing history to life and violently fill in the blank. Warrior Showdown is in no way intended to replicate history or suggest that this is what would happen in any given situation. Warrior Showdown is designed to play out, to simulate some of the battles that history never allowed. If you are expecting in any way to see a historically accurate representation of what would happen if these fighters were to meet in history, uh, you came to the wrong place. So we kind of explore that from a point of cinematic drama where the audience writes the story and we just perform it. Warrior Showdown is over the top, ridiculous, but a ton of fun. Once we had the roster of warriors, we decided how, how do we determine who's going to win these fights in a fair, objective way. So I decided that we would leave who wins these fights to the power of popular vote. We would post videos online and people would vote on who they wanted to win in that particular matchup and that was the way that we conducted the choreography. In some cases, in order to stay on schedule, we had to shoot alternate endings. So, uh, depending on the way that the viewers voted, that would be the ending of the fight that we would use online. You voted for each warrior to triumph over the other. So if there's anyone to blame, get onto my online forum. And, and complain to the other people that they chose poorly. Because when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter who wins in real life. It doesn't matter who would have won in history. What matters is who you pick. You know, it's really interesting how quickly people latched on to commenting on these fights. Uh, and some audiences were very polarized in who they felt should have won. But the one character who had resounding support from beginning to end, especially from the female audience, I would have to say the boxer. I mean, they just rallied around him in ways I couldn't believe. They were like, not only is he absurdly handsome, extremely talented fighter, but his fighting technique was really deadly, a compelling character. Not to mention, I mean, the actor just really knew how to rock and roll that character. And, and I can't tell you how many women left comments online about his 
muscular physique. There are even some users who change their user profile to Boxer XOXO, I love Boxer.com, save the Boxer. Uh, I've even had a number of requests for Boxer posters. You know, he has such an overwhelming fan following that they even want to make a spin-off movie about the boxer where he saves the United States from uh, the resurrected Nazi terrorists. I'm currently in negotiations with Wolfpack Productions to make that one happen. The Knight and the Samurai were two characters that I knew everybody would want to see fight because that was who I always wanted to see fight. And the only problem with that matchup early on is one of them had to die. Uh, I knew it was an iconic matchup. People are making this comparison all the time of who would win. And the Samurai versus the Knight is one of the classics. So I wanted to make sure that matchup occurred, so we put it in round one. But of course, those were characters that, that were so immensely popular that no matter which one edged out the other in the vote, there was going to be a, a big group of people with them set. One of the obvious challenges of Warrior Showdown is that each weapon of, the, of its age was designed to be effective against the other weapons of that age. So we had to make some decisions within the reality of our tournament what would happen if certain weapons met up against each other. And we always erred on the side of what made a more interesting fight. If you chop a piece of wood hard enough with a sharp sword, it would break. But then you have a one move fight. If a pirate pulls out his flintlock and shoots the ninja down in one move, that's not a very compelling fight. There's no drama attached to that. So we wanted, we wanted to put these people to work. So I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say, okay, the pirate doesn't have his gun. So in that one, they have to fight, they have to test their warrior spirit, not test their technology. When you pair weapons that were never really meant to meet in history, it creates some obvious challenges in terms of the timing, the distance, making the fights look like they're happening spontaneously and not like people are waiting for each other. And that's also one of the central tenets of Tim Weskey's style of swordplay. It, we don't believe in polite ninjas. People have to look like they're moving through the space the way that the body really moves. Even if perhaps the move choices or the move matchups aren't realistic, the fight has to look like it's really happening. And to be able to achieve that with such a vastly different collection of fighters was probably the most challenging thing, but definitely the most exciting and rewarding and interesting thing to see play out. And that's what I think Warrior Showdown really offers. If I had to pick a single moment that stuck out, it would definitely be Caveman versus Spartan. When we're on the set, the actor who was playing the Spartan, who is, you know, a method actor, God bless him, he did not want to be hit in the face with a stunt turd. So, that particular round we were shooting in a horse arena. So, there was plenty of real waste material scattered throughout the entire arena. And he's like, No, don't throw this stunt turd at me. I want it to be real. I want the reaction to look good. So, the reaction that actually appears in the film is the reaction of a man who was actually hit in the face with actual fecal matter. If I had to pick an overall defining experience, the actor who played the Star Warrior in this first came to me five feet tall and with such a passion for sword fighting. And he trained very hard. He did private lessons with me uh, every week, sometimes multiple times a week. And his particular warrior in this tournament turned out to be a very popular one. So throughout the process of each fight, we got to see this young fighter grow from uh, this at the time when we started, a 13-year-old boy to a 14-year-old boy who put on about 8 inches between the first fight and the final fight. We even had to redo some of his costumes from the beginning because he had outgrown them. And his character undergoes a pretty dramatic arc. And so that, coupling with him improving as a fighter as it went and, and the darkening of his character, created for me a an experience that I'm very thankful was captured on film. So we get to watch his evolution in real life as a fighter as well as the evolution of his character. But what you can expect from the feature version is a compilation of all of the fights that were released online, all 15 fights from the very first fight of the very first round to the championship round. But unlike online where you don't really get to be inside the minds of the characters or their development from fight to fight, there's some extra things thrown in here where you'll 
not only understand their mentality going into the fight and their strategies going into the fight, but you're also going to get a little bit more of a detailed idea of the story behind it. We found the one common thread. No matter what they did in their life, no matter what country they were born in, no matter what time they were born in, they were warriors. So we used that common thread to construct a storyline that linked each of these warriors together and put them into this place so that they can have this tournament to the death. How did this tournament come into being? Who is the master of this tournament? What is the reward of winning this tournament? Why would these warriors want to compete in this tournament? What is their overriding super objective? Hacking it into a feature-length film.